I will not vote for a budget that does not bring New York in line with compassion and common sense. Children do not belong in prison. Children must be treated as children. Thus, I cannot vote in favor of this budget extender. At our Raise the Age hearing in early February, we heard from jurists, activists, educators, everyday New Yorkers. One man's testimony stood out the most to me. His name was Lawan Reed. He bravely shared his experience of being treated as an adult by our system, still a child. His experience of solitary confinement and his experience of terror in our prisons. Those experiences call into question whether we can say we have a justice system at all. That's why any budget I vote for must include Raise the Age, because of Reed's experience and that of every young person who has been brutalized by the New York system. So again, that was a minute of State Senator Jesse Hamilton outlining why he will not be casting a vote for the state budget extender. This is the first time ever that Cuomo, Governor Cuomo's been late, like I said. So what is an extender and what does it mean for the state's budget? We'll be tackling those questions and more when we get a rundown of the new of what's happening in the news with Kings County politics style with their contributing reporter Kelly Mena, welcome to BK Live. Thank you for having me, yeah. Brian. First timer, welcome I know, to the table. I know, it's so nice to be here. Well, we were just watching Senator Hamilton talk about this uh, issue that's important to him, and he tied it to his vote for voting for the extender. It's about uh, raising the age so young folks wouldn't be thrown into the correction system with adults, like people who are in that in-between <laughs> age where you're right. going to go left or right, frankly. Mm -hmm. But you have an update on that. I do have an update. I got some exclusive news from a source that they're actually planning to pass it today. Yes. Um, something should come out in, at around noontime, and that they were able to get the vote so that that is part of the budget and raise age will be able to kind of change and kind of reform the um the criminal justice system. Phenomenal. Yeah. Hashtag raise the age. That <laughs> exactly. was something a lot of uh, city council people, I know Jumani Williams was someone who staunchly backed that on the city council level all the way up to Hamilton, and now it's going to be the law of the land if they pass this budget. Yeah, I think it's also a big deal right now because criminal justice reform is kind of one of the big ticket items, especially with all the elections coming in. DA's race is really big about it. Yeah. Mayor de Blasio just made of just announced about the closing of Rikers Island. Sure. A lot of the people that go to Rikers Island are actually young people, especially from disproportionately minority groups. Right. Jesse Hamilton's district, it's in Crown Heights, it's in East Flatbush. So I think that's one of the big issues going into this election season, without a doubt. And it really was all about, like I said, that sweet spot of if someone can be convicted or go into the system as an older person and be forced into an adult population versus more interventionist strategies that could really make a difference in someone's life before they hit the big time. Right, and I think it's also a, a, a difference between what type of crime they're committing versus these older adult right. criminals, kind of, they're targeting nonviolent crimes. So exactly. this is like jumping the turn style, getting caught with an, All these an open- sort of gateway exactly, offenses. That, right, so they're trying to create it so that these people aren't being kind of categorized in that same group of violent criminal offenders. So before we move on, do you know if there were any sort of enemies to this thing? Were there any loud voices? Or was it just sort of the inaction and slowness that comes? I can't recall anyone standing out there saying, oh no, we gotta keep this. Um, no, I don't think there was anybody against it. I think it was more of who wants to take the credit for this is our gotcha. policy change. This is something that we want to do, especially since it's an election year. It's yeah. all about who can take the credit and be like, that was something that I did. Right, an idea whose time has come with success having many fathers <laughs> and mothers in this case. But you mentioned a second ago the DA's race in Brooklyn is heating up. Last time it was the only competitive borough-wide race here in Brooklyn. It was a CBS reality show with Charles <laughs> Hines, and lots of folks threw their hats in. And now you were recently attending an independent Democrats meeting where at least, what, five people? Five showed people, up, yeah. The including race. one who was undeclared <laughs> and a guy who's actually doing the job right. but didn't show up because he's not really in it. So, who was there, first of all? Um, who was there? Um, Vincent Gentile's already a council member right, right. now. Um, he's the like, 
I'm in it, but not in it. Kind thing. of, yeah. Like, he he was kind of like a speculation kind of deal. Like, if I were to run, these are kind of right. my ideas. He still ideas. gave a speech. He still gave a speech. Yeah. He kind of wanted to see, I think, more of like what type of support he would get. Mm -hmm. There's so many people in the race right now, so it's really kind are. of like it's breaking off, and it's like, is this the best decision for me? I think he's also contemplating if he wants to stay in Brooklyn as a council member, especially right. in his district. There's so much going on in that area. It's true. Brooklyn is definitely growing there's so many things that are developing and it's one of the all the races right now are kind of important but definitely in his district yeah. the DA's race and um, there was a couple of other people but um, I've interviewed recently on Madimwa for the DA's office and right. um, she's kind of again about cr criminal justice reform she's dealt in the with young people, young people children yeah. criminal uh, crimes against children, crimes sexual against children sexual crimes against children, and she kind of is in that same category. I want to reform. I want to bring it back so that young people and minorities yeah. aren't kind of afraid of the criminal justice system, aren't afraid of cops coming into their neighborhood. And she's doing double duty working at the borough president's office she as well. She is. Yeah, she is. And she has his support as well for her candidacy. And I think that she is coming from that more of a compassionate background that mm -hmm. um, Senator Hamilton was talking about, right. trying to get connected back to these neighborhoods and kind of give them that opportunity to really rise up and invest back into their communities. Yeah, she's not the loudest voice out there yelling about law and order, but she is has this sort of ideal about compassionate and helping victims and really community resource driven justice kind of thing. Right. Is there anyone in very stark contrast to her? We've had mm -hmm. uh, the acting DA on our show as well as uh, Fre Fleedler. Mm -hmm. Mark Fleedler, who uh, was here as well, giving us some of his policy planks. Mm -hmm. I think that the DA right now, the acting DA, is not necessarily in stark contracts to her, but he kind of comes from this criminal justice background of trying to get these crimes down, get them low. Right. He's and done every job in right. the office. Exactly, okay. starting from the bottom up. So kind of, he's coming from this idea of we want to get crime down, we want to prosecute these people and make sure that we're targeting these places. If it's unfortunately neighborhoods that seem to have high crimes, that's the people that we need to put the most, most resources into. Those are the districts we need to put more resources into. But I don't think she has a stark contrast to anybody. Everybody kind of is in this level of let's reform, let's try to bring back this positivity towards criminal justice and yeah. going, having a positive light towards cops in the NYPD. So before we move on, I just want to give like one second to how diverse this group of candidates is. Mm -hmm. If that says anything for Brooklyn, where we are, where we might be going into the future, it's pretty good. Like the openly gay candidate who's got the credentials, right. we've got women in, people of color, yeah. like it's, we really have a wide swath of people who bring a lot of experience to this race. I think that's uh, that's great because I think that's saying a lot about Brooklyn. We're diversifying a lot. There's not what your usual people that you're getting. Even AIDS, we got a guy who <laughs> harkens back to the Rockefeller. I right know, here. he's, talk about a funny guy, what a personality. It's kind of awesome because it just shows the, the diversity we have in Brooklyn, but also the change that we can really see if we bring somebody new, somebody fresh, mm -hmm. somebody that has a different perspective. A lot of them, some of them are not even from Brooklyn, so it's nice to see like what they think Brooklyn can be and how it's developed since they've been here for a couple of years. So it's really awesome. So we, in our last three minutes, can we just cram as much housing into this thing oh as we gosh, can? Oh my gosh, yeah. So from the top, we're gonna go to Lori Cumbo and bring back Jesse Hamilton. Mm -hmm. They were recently, as you wrote, in the pouring rain <laughs> yes. out there fighting for a program that a project at Rogers Ave that's slated to be a homeless shelter right. for families. Right. So affordable housing is huge right now. There you go. Brooklyn is developing at a rapid pace. There are high rises going in everywhere, condos. They say they're affordable. At that particular site, that was originally just supposed to be condominiums, not with the lottery system in place of portion of it was supposed to go to affordable housing. Right. They then, de then decided to make it a shelter. The problem is that people in that neighborhood and in that community don't feel that a shelter is the best choice for that development just yeah. because the shelter is temporary. Mm -hmm. It doesn't give people an opportunity to invest back into their communities. And for it's specifically geared towards families, that development, and that project. And they have project. a disproportionate share of exactly. uh, shelters and emergency housing right. in that neighborhood. Exactly. Area. So people want them to have an opportunity to live there longer, right. make it permanently low income. A lot of the people in these communities are people who are struggling to pay mm -hmm. bills already, are below 
below the poverty line or are living on a fixed income. Right. If they make it so that it's low, then these people will be able to stay longer, invest in their neighborhoods, and yeah. really get an opportunity to grow. It's sort of a chicken and egg thing. It's yes. like we can have a homeless shelter for families or we can make permanent affordable housing right. so people won't be pushed into homeless exactly. shelters. And the unsure thing, just to go back to that, yeah. Crown Heights right now is actually just on the map for getting the first couple of shelters. They're trying to fight all these shelters just because they feel like people are dumping all these homeless people on them. Right. And not that these people are bad or anything, but it's they're coming from other boroughs, they're coming from the Bronx, they're coming from Queens, but yeah. yet they're being told and fed that this these people true. are from Brooklyn, you guys are the ones that need to have them because they're from there. Right. And that's kind of not true. It's more of, they're coming from other places, but they might be putting a zip code that they're in Brooklyn for gotcha. now. So that's kind of the idea. So Kelly, in our last Last minute here, I'm going to tap you for any underreported thing or any other scoops you had before walking into the studio. The last minute is yours. What should we be looking out for in the news in Brooklyn right now? I think that you should definitely be looking out for the race between Lori Cumbo and Ada Fox mm. in that district. It's Again, gonna be these two. Yes, rematch. it is. I mean, it's a big deal right now. Lori Cumbo is definitely being highly criticized. The Bedford Union Armory is in her district. Right. She has a chance to really make a difference. Um, I think you should definitely be looking out for the council race, the 41st district. That's um, Bed-Stuy, East Flatbush, Brownsville. That's a big one right now. Brownsville's going through a rezoning process. Yeah. Talk about affordable First housing. Morning. It's kind of the last frontier, but now they're being tapped, so it's a big deal for them. I think those two things are definitely, and of course the DA's race, which is going to be a big race for everybody. Everybody wants to see if the acting DA can kind of win win people for yes. once because he didn't actually have to do anything. That's true. So, yeah. Well, we will keep our ears open and our eyes trained to Kings County politics to follow you and your colleagues over there. Thanks for joining us at the Thank table. Thank you for today. having me. I had a great time. It. Absolutely.